Hi, this is Jay Shelton, Mr. Shelton. Uh, Saturday, September 17th, I think. And I'm here to do my demo on drawing a portrait. No. Optimally, your number one choice is get somebody in person that's going to pose because seeing a real person, how their face breathes and moves, that's better than any photo. If you have to go through photos because of the situation we're in, get a photo of someone you know or someone in your family. I am using Sean Connery as James Bond circa like 62, but that's because mine's not a project and I had to grab anything here I could, so that's what I did. That's not what you're to do. Now, we'll go through all the steps that we talked about in class, and I think most of them are written on Schoology. But if you're having trouble, just follow along. Now remember, you, for everything I'm going to do today, until I say differently, I, but I'm, everything that I'm going to do today, you should be using your H pencil, going so light that when I look at it on the screen, like if you're trying to show me during the virtual class, the Zoom, I can barely see it. Now remember, we start with a circle. Now again, I'm using a 2B. You should use an H so I can barely see it. Now, do I want to have all these lines? Not necessarily. I'm just trying to even out my circle, right? That's why I'm kind of going back and forth. So I want it to be a circle, not an oval, a circle. Now, all this sketchiness, don't worry about because all those things I'm telling you not to erase are going to fade in the back when you bring out your darks. You know, you saw those examples. They're on Schoology. You can go look at them and see how... If you look at them, you see all those lines in the background and they don't affect the drawing whatsoever. Now, what was I doing? Okay, so, now, look at his face. It's not straight on, it's turned. Don't take the face and squeeze it the other direction, right? If they're turned sideways, you have to turn them sideways. If they're looking down, you have to make them look down. It's simpler if you get someone looking straight at you. So normally, like an axis for the face that are looking straight ahead will be right down the middle. Now I want to get this out of the way. I'm looking at Sean's face here. I'm seeing far more of this side than that side. Let's see how much more. But one, two, three. I'm seeing a little over, a little less than a third on this side. So divide the face into three. A little beyond that, and I'm going to just, I don't have to be exact, but I'm going to say that's the axis of his face right there. Everybody see that? Right there. Right there. That's where the nose is. That's where the center of his face is. So I just want to get that out of the way. Hopefully you guys are closer to the middle. If you have just in the middle, it's easier. But you can't fake it because, look at cheeks. His cheek's not going to look the same turn that way as that way. If his face is put on its side, the weight of one cheek's going to look fatter, so you can't fake it. Now I'm going to look at his chin. Okay, now his chin, remember this bottom of my circle here, that's the center of the mouth. That's where the two lips press together. Remember, lips are not important. Ignore lips as much as you can for as long as you can. So that's where his lips are, the bottom of the circle. So now I'm going to look at him again. I'm going to look at his chin. His chin's got this kind of shape to it. Now I'm looking at the shape of his chin. Is it a butt chin? That's called a, a cleft chin. Is it a triangular chin? Is it a fat chin? Well, his chin, let me see. First of all, distance-wise, let's see. Now you, remember, if someone's sitting in front of you, you can't do this with your pencil right up to their face. You have to measure and stand back and do it in distance and keep your elbow locked so distances don't change. So let's go ahead and let's figure that chin thing out early. And when we think of the head, we think of hair as included in head or hats or anything they're wearing. It's all part of the head. So let's see. One of those is equal to one, two, and just a little under three. So that means if I divide this into thirds, it doesn't have to be exact again. That's where his chin is, okay? And we know his chin's centered there. And I'm going to look at the drawing I have. You don't need to see me doing it. You can if you want. And I'm going to sit there. Let me see if I can get them both lined up. Maybe I put them over here. Uh, you can kind of see it. All right, just put the camera up a little, actually. That takes care of that. Okay. So now you see the chin the same as I do. So I'm looking at the shape of his chin. It goes down to there. His chin is kind of like... Let me move this thing just a tad more. His chin... Comes in a little more rounded there. Right, right in the center there. Rounded. Comes in, gets a little flat in the bottom. Okay, good. Now, how do I attach it to the rest of his face? Remember, we don't do the ice cream cone thing. Where does our face attach to the chin? Down here by the jaw. So now I'm gonna start carving up the head to look like his head. 
So I'm looking here over this side. I go, okay, he doesn't have such a big circle. If I'm doing his head, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut that big chunk of the circle right off there. I'm gonna start moving in just like his brow does there. Comes in there, his cheek goes in there, his cheek comes in here. And maybe I have to pull that chin a little bit or else push this out a little bit. It's okay to make adjustments. Look, I'm not erasing, I'm just making my adjustments by making more marks. And I wanna keep all that soft stuff under there. It doesn't have to be exact. This side, yeah, we know that's where the roundness is, so that looks about right, you know, when I look at it, right? So I come maybe cut a little bit off. Maybe it's a little large there. Now, if you're looking straight on, you usually cut a lot off both sides, unless they have an extremely round face. Here's his jawline. I get that. And I'm going to think of the chin as its own piece. This cheek as its own piece. And it's okay that I'm sketchy. You guys are going to be so light. And the bottom of the, the mouth is still that line. And I see his neck. So I'm forming it. And when I'm doing this early formation, I don't want to forget the hair. Remember, the hair is part of the head. Even though his hair is very flat there, it's not tattooed to his head. Don't have it down to the skull. It still has depth. I could stick my pencil in that hair about a half inch. So go ahead and give that hair depth. But don't do a line separating the hair from the head. Don't do one of those long plastic lines that make the hair look plastic. Just show a few lines showing direction the hair goes in. Give it a little bit of body, and that's good for now. Okay. So basically, what I just did, I got the basic shape of his head, make the changes you need to make. Still, you know, nothing has to be exact yet. You're gonna have a lot of chance. So now we go back to your original circle, and I think I didn't give him enough, a little bit of fat right there. It's not really fat, I don't know what you'd call it. So you go back to your original circle, and you're gonna divide your original circle, your original circle, you're gonna divide that in half. Not high, not low, get the original circle. What is that? That is not the eyes, that's the brow. So we look at someone like Connery, he's got a very strong brow. Now if they don't have it, by brow I mean the bone here, the fat right there, all that stuff that makes you kind of jut out like a caveman above your eyes there. But some people, some people, maybe they're more advanced than the rest of us, have no brow, they have no muscle or bone there. Um, then you can rely on eyebrows to an extent, but don't get all bushy. So I'm gonna use that and I'm gonna look at Sean Connery here and I'm gonna try to mimic, you know, the brow. He's got, you know, something strong here. You see that? I can exaggerate that. And whenever you see an odd shape in your drawing or the person you're drawing their head, whenever you see a crooked brow or eyebrow, or you see maybe a bend in their nose, don't let it get swallowed up into blandness. That's what kids tend to do. They tend to hide and overwork all the uniqueness so it falls out. No, exaggerate it. La anything that makes them look a little different, lash onto it and exaggerate it because that you're gonna need that to really make it look like them. Okay, so I've got his brow there, you see, more or less. And now if you wanna do the hair, don't do any crazy dark thing. Just kinda look at it and vaguely show the direction of the strokes for now. Just vaguely show the direction it grows in if you have to do that hair. Okay, boom, boom, boom. And like I said, his hair is up here. And I know I'm telling you not to erase, but since I'm using a 2B, and you see what's happening, it's getting really too thick, too dark, I'm gonna start erasing a few things that you will not need to, because you're gonna leave it all light. And when you leave it all light, it just makes really nice background color and background movement for your final when you do pull out your dark. So if I'd been going light like you're supposed to, I wouldn't have to erase, but, and I don't want you to think I'm drawing so much hair. I'm just trying to show just enough to show direction, okay? So now here. Connery's got that little crook there. You see, it can make a little dent there. So again, you don't need to erase if you're going lightly. Okay, so if I know if I know that's the brow, I can figure the bottom of the eyes are around here. That I can pretty much guess. Now here's how you really have to be careful, and this is where you have to be honest if the face is turned or not. You can't fake it. You gotta look and see how far is each eye from the side of the head. Okay, that looks about right. You know, that's a good distance, that eye to the side of the head. If I look at Sean here, let's look at the other side. You know, the eye comes almost up to the edge. So I gotta say, this eye comes right to about here, right almost to the edge. So I got that. I know what, now, if they're looking down, you curve when you do the eyes. If they're looking up, you curve up when you do the eyes. He's looking pretty much straight ahead so he can go straight across. Now, eye, eye. So now I know my eye is in these parameters. Generally, if you divide that in thirds, you'll get the right proportions. But because this eye is squished a little bit, I can't go into thirds. I just kind of kind of estimate and eyeball it. And that's what I think. I think one eye goes to about there, and one eye goes to there. And right now, I'm just going to make little windows. Those are temporary. Now, what can you do with these windows? Why now I can figure out where the mouth goes. I look at this, and I look straight up. The mouth intersects with just about the center of the eye. So I go center of the eye, 
here, that's where that mouth ends, right? And we know the mouth is on a line. Now, Sean's mouth's a little high, so I'm gonna bring that line up a little bit and, that, and maybe bring the chin up a little line there. Now, this side, what happens? The mouth, the very edge of the slit. I don't care about lips, ignore lips. Look at the slit of the mouth. Goes to the edge, closer to the edge of the eye because of the angle right here. So now we know my mouth goes from there to there. Again, I'm going very dark because I want you to see. Now, as I said, I can tell his mouth is a little higher than that. So, every, you know, you gotta be willing to make changes because everybody's face is a little different. You would not have to erase again because I'm doing this because I'm going so dark. So now I'm gonna change his mouth to there and bring the chin up a little too and the face up a little to this here. Okay, erase some of that mess. So here I go. Now, so I know that's his mouth. That's his eyes. And I can use all this to find the nose because if I look where the tip of his nose goes, it goes in just a little bit closer than the mouth did to there's the tip of his nose. And on this side, this part of his nose goes right, right into where that kind of divot starts there. That'd be right about there. Pretty good idea. Now, how far is the nose from the mouth? That bottom things, I can guess that. So right now I have the parameters of the eyes, nose, and mouth without having drawn any of them. Got that? I've got the parameters. And again, I'm very dark, you can go light. Ears, you don't see the ear on this side. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna erase some of this mess. Please don't on yours. Don't think I'm just cheating because I can't help it. it I am really am going dark so you can see. If this was light like yours is, I wouldn't erase a thing. I've got ones I've done in pen that you wouldn't believe that I've never, you know, obviously you don't erase pen. Um, but I gotta make it so you can at least see what I'm doing. Okay, this here, we can see this here. So this here lines up, it goes, his are high above the brow a little, right there's that ear, and the bottom of that ear lines up to about the where the bridge of the nose would be, so let's say around there. So now I know his ear fills that shape there. Later I'll do the details, now I have the ear, right? So I have this, okay. I can go ahead and I can figure out the neck. I can figure out his sport jacket. And again, draw what you see, not what you think you see. I see his shoulder go like this. Don't force people on. If you drew too high and their head's getting cut off the page, then cut it off the page. Do not squish it down to fit the page. Everybody got that? You, you, you let the size go. If this side of the head went off the page, hopefully I'd planned it better, but if I didn't, I would let it go off the page. I would not, I would not squish it to fit the page. Does that make sense? Looks like I'm giving him a double chin. And he does not have a double chin. He's just cleaning up a little, which I wouldn't have to do if I was going light. There's the gun, there's the shoulder. Okay, so let's get back to the face now. All right, now, I think the head's a little higher here. Remember, not flat hair. Hair is, there's so many kinds of hair. I, I think I may do another tutorial in a few days on a kind of hair, like shorter tutorial. Okay, so now I've blocked it in. No, well, not quite. Let's look at the features. Uh, let's do the eyes first. Oh, let's do the mouth first. Kids really get obsessed with doing lips and decorative. Lips are basically shading. Maybe a little bit of uh, form there at the bottom, but the upper lip we're gonna ignore because we're not shading. What is important, and I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna erase it so you can see it. I know where his mouth is. It's in this parameter here. But the important thing is that I catch the corners there, and that means the skin, everything the depth there, all the little things along there that make his mouth look like him. We don't recognize lips, we recognize corners, we recognize these little pockets of fat around the edge of a mouth, we recognize all that. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna come in, he's got a little crinkle here. And I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna go do this. Get a little softer, now it gets a little heavy and then it curves, his mouth kind of curves in there because you know we have that weird turn because we're he's not, 100% turned towards us. He's a little off, a little fat there. And now the bottom lip does, now listen, if I, most kids without even looking would just show the lip like this. That's not what it does. <laughs> it doesn't go all the way across the slit of the mouth. Uh, I gotta get rid of that little thing there. That's gonna make a difference, okay. The lip starts around here and goes down there a little. I hate to keep saying it. Don't erase like I am, I'm just showing you. I, I, I can't have all that darkness in the way if you're gonna see what I'm doing. Okay, upper lip, you don't really need to show anything, but we can show that little snot gutter there, the fulcrum or whatever it's called. All right, and we'll do a little bit of the, start working on these cheeks a little more, all right? 
And, and uh, let's look at the real guy. So you see where I'm getting all this from? I did the mouth like I saw it there, that little slit there. The cheeks, I'm trying to do all that. See where that's coming from? You see how it's coming together? Right? Working. Little by little. You can get rid of some of these other lines. All right, so come, we'll come back to that later, but that's how we start getting the mouth together. Now let me go up to the nose. The nose, you know the nose, we've made the parameters, right? So we know the nose, we know the nose fits in here. Now because, of, because he's turned, we know, we know the nose is, a, is a, we're only gonna get to the edge of that. We're not gonna see that nostril. Now the first thing we do is find the button. Listen to me carefully, a button's not a circle. Some of you, no matter what I say, will just draw a little circle. And some people it is, and it's not small. You gotta make the right size. So I look at his button, is it's if I took away the wings, what would it look like? And his is almost like a spade shape, and it's pretty big. Comes right down to there. You see what I did? Here I'm drawing on this collector's magazine. So I wanna repeat that shape right here, but I have to give enough room for the later to do the nostrils. But this one comes right to the edge, we know. This is a, this part gets skipped more than any other part, it seems, when kids do this, and it really does make their drawing suffer. You can tell when they just tried to do an outline of a nose. Don't skip. I've done this enough, and I've, I'm teaching this. I know when you take shortcuts. I know when you did the lazy thing. I can always tell, so don't do that. Okay, so there's the body of his nose. It's really a difficult nose to draw. Now, from that, we can go ahead and we can extrapolate the nostril, where the nostrils are, and we can do a little bit of... This, right? No, I'll get rid of that line there. Okay, I'll get rid of a little more of that line. All right, and his cheek comes in like that. Nose like that, look here. We know that this comes in and look exactly, look at what his nose does there. It's, this is where kids also start drawing what they think a nose looks like rather than just looking at what's right in front of them. Okay, now here, a lot of kids want to outline the nose. Just draw the bones that are necessary. For Connery, it looks like it comes in from the eye. There's a little bone there. And be, look, I'm letting it disappear. He's got another bone right here. A little bit of fat there. And I see how I'm drawing his nose from this. Let me bend that a little. So little by little, I'm finding his actual, I'm finding what's really there. There's a little more going on in there. And, it's, and, and if I have to erase it and move it a hundred times, I'll erase it and move it a hundred times, whatever it takes. You keep adjusting, looks like I got that out a little too wide. Come in a little bit, make that a little fatter. Adjust all you need to adjust. And always get, get more of those details and lines around the face. And I think this actually leans in more there, that nose. Okay, but anyway, you see what I'm doing? I'm making adjustments, okay? At the mouth. Okay, next thing. Eyes. Remember, pupils don't matter. I don't want you to, I want you to leave the pupils empty, okay? If you have to put a little circle in there, leave you can, but I want you to focus on the skin around the eyes. We don't recognize anybody unless they have really insane irises. Most of us just have black holes in our eyes. We don't recognize anybody from the inside. We recognize the skin around the eyes. We recognize, and don't just draw don't just draw uh, an almond shape like that. That's boring and that's, that's, that's one step above doing circles, right? I want you to just really look at every nook and cranny and let your hand softly follow it. Now I'm holding the pencil a little tighter than normal because we're going into detail, but then I want to resist doing that too much because if I go too tight, it's going to be dark. But I know you have to grip a little tighter for detail. And look at the fat under the eye. Look at that. Okay, here and now I look at that eyebrow really arches up doesn't it so I don't want it too dark so I'm gonna erase it and do it again later let it really arch up that eyebrow right now I look at he's got another flap of skin here right now eyelashes somebody was asking about feminine versus masculine Femin women do have tend to have more pronounced eyelashes and I think it's, you know sometimes it's artificial and it's, then men do that too artificially um, it's up to you. Sean does have some kind of like flittering eyelashes. You know, they kind of do show up a little, so I'll do a few lines. I don't want to overdo it. Remember, that's part of the decision making. You decide what lines are important and which aren't. Okay, and you know, I can take my time and I'll do this side. There's the fat around there. I'm not just looking at the eye, I'm looking at everything around the eye. Make sure your eyes aren't too close together, too far apart. Make sure they're not too big, too small. Make sure they're even, you know. Yeah, I, I don't want you to think about pupils because pupils to me are just shading, you know, and I don't want you to think of shading. 
I want you to think about getting these eyes right. So really just look at there. He's got these wrinkles coming out here, right? And now I can start doing a little more of the hair. You know, I just want you to see. Again, I keep saying it, don't erase like I do. I can get that ear a little more defined now. The ear isn't just that shape I drew. The ear has actual lines in it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And get, you know, don't just draw an ear, draw their ear. So little by little, it's coming together. Now, let me stop for a little bit. You know, it, it's not bad, it's coming along. Now, oops, you know that, like, now I know that ear is out way too far. You know, so my point is this, that was, that took me, you know, what did I do, 20 minutes, okay, to get this far. That should take you a couple days, I would think, to do the same. Um, it's gonna, I want you to spend, now, you're at the point where you've blocked it in. This is just the beginning. Now I want you to spend your next couple weeks double, triple checking everything. I look at this and it's pretty good. Actually, I almost captured Sean, but I know I'm not quite there. So I'm gonna be adjusting this for days, right? Here, I bring the face in there. And maybe it doesn't look like him. So maybe it's a little thing with an eyebrow. Look, that eyebrow's too high. So you gotta be willing to do this. You gotta be, that's why we're going light. You have to be willing to make changes. Maybe it's a little corner of the eye there. Maybe it's a little nook in the nose, but all of a sudden I'll do one thing and he'll really jump out at me, right? Okay. Um, I think, I think if I'm, I'm betting like another 15, 20 minutes work, I can get him really looking like this. And then once you've got him and you've checked, triple checked your proportions and you've done all that, that's when you start in with your darks and lights. So, for instance, let's say this was all in my H pencil. Let's let everything go in a, a level back. You know, now I come in with my Ds and my, my 6B, my 2B, my 4B, whichever B you have, and now I would start playing with the darks and lights. Maybe I want it to get a little dark in that crevice there. So I don't go crazy, I just have it a little dark and I lighten it up and let it, everything goes dark to light, not like dark. And you want a variety. Some of you on the shoes, that was the problem. You had one kind of light sh shadow and that's it. And then at the end you take your ebony, your real dark one, and you find some of your darkest places. But spend time doing that, finding your darks and lights. And you don't have to erase because all that stuff in the back kind of disappears and becomes just life. It becomes stuff that makes the drawing look alive, all those scribbles in the back. So if you did this well, you're not gonna have to erase everything, okay? Um, I hope that helps. Uh, Mr. Sheldon, I'll have this up. Uh, I think there's anything else I need to know. No, that's, that's pretty much it, okay, bye.